Dale Morris, prominent local businessman, philanthropist, and head of one of Edinburgh's main crime families for the past 30 years. He has been notoriously difficult to prosecute. Jared Noble and Associates. He was working for Morris. And who are the associates? Hey, baby girl. There's one, his wife, Alexandra Noble. What did your husband do for a living? He was an accountant. Here we have a show that is just so incredibly intense, Payback. And a great title, by the way. Morvan, your character, Lexi, is in such a, an awful predicament. Something's happened that she had no clue about. Her husband has died. And suddenly she's in, enmeshed with gangsters. How did you feel when you read it? It's just such a, a wonderful range of really intense things to get to play as an actor. It's just really... And I already knew Peter was doing it, so I was already imagining who I would be playing that with. And so it was just really exciting for me. Jed Mercurio is such a genius. And I love the fact that you you know nothing. The police know nothing. I mean, very little. But we know everything watching. That is really kind of thrilling. Mm -hmm. And it just adds an extra zing. Peter, you do play this terrifying man, yeah. uh, Cal, who's not only um, deeply evil, but he's also very loving. Yeah. And I guess these two things can... Ex coexist right of course i mean those guys they never they never see themselves as the bad guy they see themselves as the victims or the or the provider <laughs> you know he's the guy all he's doing is looking after his family these guys favorite film is the godfather but they're not seeing it from francis ford coppola's point of view they actually they think the godfather is actually the good guy you know they the these guys have a very particularly um, narcissistic um, and myopic way of looking at the world, you know. So it's not difficult for them to be, you know, to, it's not unusual to see them smiling and and being nice. I was at a charity do <laughs> once. Yeah, well, I was at a charity do once and it, we were serving people as part of the fundraiser. Celebs serve people. And nice. suddenly these items that were up for auction suddenly the prices went through the roof and 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 thus the charity was raising more and more money. But it turned out, and I, and I spoke to, the, it was a friend of mine was organising this, and at the end of the night, he'd made over a million quid for his, for his charity. And I said to him, isn't that fantastic? And, and he didn't look happy. And I said, why not? And the family that had bought all these items was a criminal family. And that's the kind of person and that's the kind of world that the Morrises of this world live in. They, they want to be seen to be giving to charity. Mm -hmm. But when somebody actually comes to their door and says, can I have the £999,000 that, what were you talking about? Fuck off. And don't, don't darken my doorstep again. So the point of that being, as far as they're concerned, look at what we're doing. Look how generous we are. But when it actually comes to paying up, no no intentions whatsoever. Unbelievable. <laughs> Just in, like psychopaths. Yes. Um, Morvan, the themes of death and fear, warfare, I guess you could say, between everyone. These, This is the stuff of storytelling going back millennia. And I'm wondering why it's so popular. I think because the, the two most powerful things that human beings experience are love and fear, right? Like bash into each other all the time because when, as soon as there's love, there's the fear of loss. And as soon as there's fear, there's the clinging on to what you love. It's just storytelling is 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 a way of sort of bringing people together about, about what we share, right? And those things don't change over time. They don't change mm -hmm. from for like you say millennia so yeah i mean we're always going to want to watch people being afraid because it makes us feel better about the times that we're afraid peter you know the truth can be so easily misunderstood but um and we doubt ourselves and like it's ruinous and i'm sort of speaking about the good people in this one but um there's no doubt in your character's world is no. there again within the, the realms of narcissism and uh, the there's a complete absence of doubt and absence of doubt is hugely dangerous yeah. because then you're not open to anything and that, that's the good, the bad, the ugly you're not open to anything, you're only open to your own uh, wants and needs and it's, yeah. it, it becomes 
it, it lit- quite literally will suck the life mm. out of everybody to bring it to bring it back to where you think it belongs, which is the your center. Mm. Crazy, Mormon. I want to ask you about the children, like the child actors. Your character is very intense in many scenes around them, and I'm just wondering how the kids were protected. Roman, the little one. He wasn't on set very much. So if anything very intense was happening, we'd shoot him quite separately. Like we'd he'd he'd come in and be he would just be in a frame by himself playing on the floor. Um so he never had to experience any kind of intensity except for just the intensity of being on a set, which in itself for a for a two and a half year old is quite yeah. extreme. And then for Olivia, she's a little bit older, she's eight, so she um she really loved being on set. It was just like a big giant playground for her. And because I'd been with her from auditions right through, um, we just had a good time. And she knew when we were acting and when we weren't. And she knew that as soon as the camera called cut, we could, you know, do a silly dance or she could finish the story she was telling me about her dance class or, you know. They bring levity and and they make sure that nobody gets too caught up in their own nonsense terror it's just, yes nonsense <laughs> it's just yes. It, I mean, it's not real what we're doing we're playing it for real but it's not real and when there's kids there you just you protect them with the play with the fantasy of it all very cool thank you you two what a terrific series just excruciatingly intense thank you oh, thank good. you so much seems he's disappeared are you kidding me turns out he's been stealing no one steals from us i know mommy did the man on the phone for you? Jared was overseeing a transfer for me. Problem is, your husband was too good at his job. He's emptied my savings accounts. I haven't got any money. Come on. Maybe this will help you concentrate. I think I may have put someone in danger. Can anyone hear me? She screwed us over, and I swear to God, she's going to pay for it.